You will own nothing and be happy, is what the World Economic Forum said back in 2016. It's almost 10 years ago. Well, they refer to everything becoming cloud and streaming and whatever, not yours. Well, I'm not happy. I want to own things. I want things to be mine. And I went through the effort of creating this amazing infrastructure that you see behind my title. Because I cloud you not, I host all of that myself. Now I've done my title. <laughs> uh, why go through all of that effort? Um, you can also just pay a service provider and don't do all of this, not have any issues. I'll explain in my presentation, but first, who am I? I'm Bart, I'm a software engineer here at Sync. Uh, this is my lovely family. I just became a dad. My kid is uh, almost five months now, so I'm definitely using him for some uh, points here. But you can see him in the, in the back. He's just silently eating. I'm also an open source enthusiast. I'm a self-hoster. And well, proud father, so let me show you the pictures of my kid representing the company, all on my own hosted server and actually, well, with some AI, so I do use AI. I just said I don't use AI, but this is machine learning happening, so I can search for Evan, which is my kid, in the sync romper, and you get this. As you can see, he's quite a little happy guy. He's, uh, well, I'm very happy. He smiles a lot. He smiles to everybody he sees, and if you're a new person he sees, first thing he's going to do is smile at you and try to win you over, and uh, so far he's lucky because he succeeds. Um, but a while back, my wife was walking outside with him, and... We had this. Now the image is a bit pixely, a bit blurry, but the thing that uh, happened was that she sent this picture to me. She was like, hey, do you also see this white in this mouth up, up top? And I was like, yeah, I see it. I've seen it for a bit, so what's up with it? She asked me, do you think something's wrong? I don't know. I mean, I'm not, doc I'm not a doctor, so let's send it to the doctor. And well, that's what I did. While she was walking outside, I sent this picture to the doctor like, hey, is this something we should pay attention to? Do we have to come in or not? Or and they called me back at the end of the day, said, well, there's nothing's wrong. If you can wipe it away, it's just from the milk and uh, nothing's wrong. If it comes back, just uh, keep an eye on it and that's it. So, and good, so good. Now, I did this and I sent a picture to my doctor. Another father, a couple of years back, did the same thing. I think this is a very famous story so far already, but uh, yeah, this dad was uh, living during the pandemic, during lockdowns, and he, saw some rash at his child's private areas and he was he was thinking like is this wrong is this not wrong i don't know so he called up the doctor like hey do i have to come in and especially during lockdowns people were preventing uh physical contact so he was also like do we prevent this and the doctor was like yeah just send me a picture and i'll have a look at it if it's really bad you know we, you can always come in but if it's not bad then you can still stay home and it's fine so the father did that took the picture sent it to the doctor that's that except that he had an Android phone, and he automatically had his pictures backed up to Google Photos. He, well, the automatic upload was enough affirmative action for Google that they could scan his photo. Uh, and they did that. The algorithm did it, and the algorithm said, well, this is uh, child's penis, right? That's clearly child pornography because, well, you can see it. It's uh, genitalia. So the algorithm did the red flag, it went to a person, the person also looked at it, oh, that's clearly a child's penis, this is clearly child pornography. Uh, so they sent it to the FBI, which is the logical thing to do if you think you found child pornography. So the FBI went to the father and was on his doorstep, and well, can you imagine opening a door and the FBI standing there like, you get child pornography, and being like, what the hell? <laughs> you know, I did not, not such, no such thing. Um, and everything got cleared up, and well, the FBI said, okay, it's clearly not child pornography, you know, it's your child, you're allowed to do this, so that's fine. Uh, but Google then said, it's all nice and dandy, and it's cool to know that you do not have child pornography, but we blocked you, and we are going to keep blocking you. And they did not reinstate this account for, I think, a while, or even at all. But the guy had everything on Google. Contacts, maps, backups, photos, uh, email, uh, two-factor authentication, just everything. And Google basically blocked his entire life. You know? Good lesson to not put all your eggs in one basket, maybe. My biggest problem... But this story is that this can happen to all of us. Uh, this dad is maybe just one unlucky dude and, you know, don't do these kind of things. Maybe just to send a picture via, I don't know, dove or something, you know, throw it through the air to the doctor, see if it lands. But yeah, the thing that I find with these uh, kind of things is that we cannot trust our service providers. 
he, the dad did not know that Google was scanning those images, did not know that they were alerting stuff. He was just thinking like, yeah, I got my own private backup solution. That, it's private, right? You trust that. Apparently you can't. Now, that's my biggest problem. I get two smaller problems. Now, I like lists. This is one of my self-hosted apps and I can keep to-do lists in here. So enjoy the nice view. I have a nice list with my problems with service providers and there's two items on there. Well, more, but for the presentation it's two because there's time. Uh, so there's no proper service. I think it's already somewhat demonstrated, but I will demonstrate further after this slide. There's also not respecting privacy. I think scanning your images, especially such a private image like that is not respecting privacy. And this happens more often than not. So I did explain these in my slides further. I think no proper service really says that there's not the, the service delivered that you think you're getting uh, is being changed without you saying, yeah, I agree to this, or I find this uh, a fine thing to happen to me, like the FBI showing up. And not respecting privacy is clearly your data is being used for something else than the intended service, like not the functionality itself is changing, but just your data that's being harvested for something like why. So I have another example. This is a screenshot from my mom's phone, actually. This happened uh, two weeks ago. Uh, she was at my, at my house. She was like, hey, um, I got this message from Google. And they say, like, uh, you do not have your uh, access to your images anymore. Your storage is full. I was like, she's got a good phone. She got, uh, like, 512 gigs of storage. It's kind of weird. Um, so I said, let me have a look at that. And she also, well, she got a new phone. And she did not disable Google Photos, but... Uh, just she installed Nextcloud for my stuff and that all uploaded fine. And then this also happened, so her storage was full. But Google also said, well, your Gmail and Drive are also full and you cannot use that anymore. So pay us or you're losing whatever you have in the cloud. She freaked out a bit and she took some action that Google proposed. And all of a sudden there were no photos on her phone anymore. And she freaked out because, well, there's photos of me, of her grandchild, of years of pictures. She was, she was like, I lost everything. Luckily, I was able to recover it. It's now all of my infrastructure, and you know I'm not going to say your storage is full. I'm going to delete your photos. So how would I notice in my to-do app? Well, this is not proper service, I think. There's more stuff, uh, not, not just Google. There's also Amazon, because there's a guy who had his smart devices locked for a week because some delivery dude said, well, there's a racist doorbell, and he was saying racist things to me. And the guy owning the doorbell was like, what the hell? I just wanted my package. The doorbell is not saying anything to you because I speak through the doorbell and I didn't say anything racist. So what the hell is happening? This actually got solved in a week. Uh, the guy was able to call with a higher up from Amazon and they said, yeah, nothing's happening. So it's all good. So they allowed him access again. But, you know, for a week he didn't have any lights, which is pretty inconvenient, I think. But, yeah, don't trust Amazon for your lights, I guess. So, yeah, what would I note for this? Also, not really proper service. Maybe privacy for the delivery guy, but yeah. Now there's more things that are happening. You know, your favorite series can disappear from Netflix or another streaming service that you use. Uh, the music service provider that you use could decide, well, we're not hosting this artist's album anymore or at all. And well, there goes your access. Maybe the artist itself decides, ah, that's all nice and dandy, but I'm going to host my music on my platform. And if you have Spotify, screw you. You don't have my music anymore. A bit of shame. Or even a more nice one. Uh, this one happened uh, two months ago, I think. Yeah, a lot of people bought Helldivers 2. It was a big hit, maybe still is a big hit. And then all of a sudden, Sony said, not even the game developer, but the publisher, Sony said, you now need to have a PlayStation account in order to play this game. Except that there were a lot of countries, 177, that are unable to create PlayStation accounts because of, I don't know, regulations, laws, I don't know. but. These people bought the game and it was just taken away from them because they could not create an account to play it. And they also didn't really get an option to refund. So it's weird, it's weird. You know, I would note that there's no proper service, all, all these four. Now my original slide ended here, but these things keep coming. May 30th, Spotify said, yeah, we sold you car thing and that's a device for your car. You can use Spotify and that's great. And then a year later they said, okay, so we're not doing that anymore. It's not profitable and we don't like it. So you are now unable to use it. Please recycle it properly. And now there's a lot of e-waste and you do not have access to your device anymore. Like in the nineties, if this would happen and a radio maker would say, okay, we are discontinuing your radio. That's fine. You can still use the radio, right? You just turn it on. That's the thing. It's not internet connected. You just have your FM frequencies. Spotify says, no, you cannot use it at all. No open sourcing, no, yeah, just nothing. It's weird. 
and even Adobe, that's June 7, as you can see, they just changed the terms of service. Like, okay, so everybody's using Photoshop, that's great. We are now using your data to train our AI and you accept this. Except people didn't. So this one got rolled back, I think. There was a lot of pushback on this and a lot of furious people, but yeah. How would they know the first one? There's no proper service. And the second one, using your data, it's definitely uh, not respecting privacy. Also maybe even wrong servers, but definitely not respecting privacy if your Photoshop data is harvested. So yeah, that's where my slides should end, but there's more. <laughs> because Sonos also decided a couple of days ago, like 2023, they had in their terms of service, we will never sell your data or use it for anything like that. And then 2024 came around and they were like, oh yeah, we're silently changing that. So we are now selling your data. And all you could do was just have a pop-up for the terms of service and say, I accept. Now afterwards you could say, I do not accept, don't use my data, but you've accepted. Even if you're really fast, you know, you click, I do not accept any longer within three seconds, it's enough for them to scan some of your data or whatever. So, you know, I'm not saying it's villainous, but oh yeah, I still have a Cunha. Here, the thing is popping up, it's no, no privacy. But yeah, is it villainous? I'm leaving the question open, but changing terms of service and just having them, having you accept it, it's, yeah. So yeah, what's my solution to this? Clearly, you know, with the talk, it's running my own, running my own server. <laughs> uh, this one uh, specifically, actually, that's my uh, B-Link. It's a small device and I run, well, almost everything I have on there right now because recently I added Raspberry Pi for my Pi hole. Now, fun fact, it's hot these days and I function less when it's hot, but apparently so does my Pi because I got a message from my wife like, honey, the internet is slow, what's happening? And I did some investigation. Yeah, this one is up in my attic beneath the roof and it gets hot in there, so the pie is throttling. So I had to tell her, yeah, the internet is slow because it's hot. She's like, what the hell? <laughs> so yeah, what do I run on this? Well, this is my infrastructure picture. Um, due to time, I'll speed up a little bit. I wanted to go through every single application, but well, I got Home Assistant for smart homes. Navidrome is my Spotify for music. Vicuña is my to-do list thing we've seen right now. Tandoor, it's a recipe management app. So you don't have to read everybody's life story before you can start cooking. Uh, image, that's my uh, personal Google Photos backup. You can see uh, Evan on there at the beginning of the slides. And then Jellyfin is my media server. It's mostly used just for all DVDs that we have and we can no longer watch on Netflix because reasons, I don't know. Buy all to block uh, ads, which is great, and block malicious websites. And then in the cloud at Akamai, I still have Vault Warmer for my passwords and Nextcloud for basically everything else. It's my own Dropbox, it's contacts, calendar, it's pretty great. So what if you want to start self-hosting? Well, there's a recipe for that. Luckily, I have a recipe hosting app, so let's have a look in Tandoor. What do you need to start self-hosting? You need a, a server. It can be an old computer, it can be a Raspberry Pi, a Zima board, uh, there's more stuff. And it's not even expensive. You can spend 100 bucks and you can have your own server running. Uh, and you know, if you use something old, you reduce e-waste. You can teach Spotify a lesson. Um, you need an application, so how do you want to flavor your cooking method? Uh, pick an application that you want. Do you want to host your media? Uh, pick Jellyfin. Do you want your own Dropbox? Maybe pick uh, Nextcloud. Uh, image if you want to get rid of Google Photos and not have the FBI show up on your doorstep. Pick something nice. And there's awesome self-hosted uh, on uh, GitHub. If you just search for those two words, you'll get the link. And there's, you can spend hours on that reading through all the applications. There's tons that you can run. Not all of them great, but most of them are pretty great. Uh, if you have an application, configure it to your liking. I mean, you have to set it up and there's great documentation with these tools. There's usually a getting started page or installation page, four or five step process maybe, and you have everything running. It's easy as hell. It's pretty cool. And then enjoy. You are now self-hosted. You're running your own applications and well, you can enjoy the privacy and the ease of mind that nobody is deleting your data or harvesting it or selling it because they can make a profit out of it, unless you decide so yourself, you know, to sell your own data, be a rebel, it's cool. <laughs> and one optional step, uh, the developers are working hard on these kinds of tools, so maybe you can give them a few bucks, you know, maybe two bucks, five bucks, I don't know, they're happy with everything these days because not a lot of people pay for software anymore because, you know, it's, it's free, it's from Google, you can use it for free and get harvested, but you don't get harvested here, and five bucks, you make them very happy. Thanks for listening. Fifteen, three, five,
Yes. Mach ihn bei Why would I uh, be uh, that uh, e model from image? It's based on the built in Docker. Uh, image die heeft dus op hun setup pagina al een Docker Compose staan. En er komt een container uh, mee gewoon in hun uh, Compose file. En die doet je machine learning. Dus de eerste keer dat je image opzet, moet je wel echt even de tijd geven om overal doorheen te werken. Ja, dus dat scant alleen een keer. Ja, en daarna gaat er gewoon één foto per keer omdat die heel plot wordt. Ja, dat heeft hij zo gedaan. Wat was het? Heb je het een model dat je er tegenaan haalt? Of moet je hem zelf eerst gaan leren wat er op de foto staat? Nee, hij herkent wel mensen in ieder geval. Um, ja, hoe die voorwerpen herkent, weet ik niet, maar dat zal in het uh, model zitten. Want dat wordt zien. Herkent hij dat zeker met de letters op het t-shirt? Ik denk het, ja. Uh, en voor, voor de mensen zie je, dan heb je een uh, pagina en dan zeg je van people. Zie je iedereen die die heeft herkend en dan kun je er zelf op klikken en zeggen van hé, hey, dit is Bart, dit is mijn vrouw, dit is mijn kind. En dan, ja, naarmate je dat meer doet, ziet hij steeds meer, ah, oh, oké. Okay. Maar is dat dan een model dat ze zelf hebben gebouwd? Of kun je dat dan ook, ja? Hebben ze zelf gebouwd. Uh, ja. Dat ja, eens. <laughs> eens, maar er zijn genoeg resources om te vinden dat je die daar goed kan vertrouwen. En dat is het voordeel van open source. En, ja. Right. Marketing. Heb je nog Google? Ik heb het wel, maar dat is meer omdat ik uh, nog aan het sparen ben voor de nieuwe telefoon en dan gaat het eraf. Wat wordt die? Het wordt uh, of Lineage of uh, Graphene, maar in ieder geval zo min mogelijk Google, want ja, sommige dingen zijn nog wel steeds handig. Google Maps is echt briljant. Ja, dat klopt, maar mijn telefoon vertrouw ik niet per se meer, want die is wel <laughs> aan het einde van zijn leven, denk ik. Hey, uh, als ik thuis sla internet heb, dan heb ik bijna ruzie. Mag hij oplossen? <laughs> Coole huis. Uh, goede internetprovider nemen. Um. Zei je net al, heb ik iets gemist toen? Ja, op die manier. Ja, ja uh, dat heb ik dus laatst echt twee dagen geleden geleerd. Dus die pie die gaat niet meer op zolder staan, die gaat naar de ruimte iets cooler is. Uh, ja, dat wist ik ook niet, maar... Ik heb een hele oude laptop gehad, die zet ik tot kant en dan blaas het erop. En... Ja. Ja, dus nee, daar, ga, daar ga ik iets op bedenken, maar in ieder geval, ja, de pie cooler houden. Ja. Zo, of course. Dit is een andere ding. Ja, ja, ja. Nee, dat is niet, hè. Ik gooi hem niet. Ik wil niet in, hè. Dat is wel een leerste. Heb ik wel gehaald er af. Ligt er binnen net uit, zeg ik. Ben je het zien, houden zijn dochter? Zo. Vet, is zo vet. Die heeft ook nog geen telefoon. Twee. Ja, ik had uh, Home Assistant op een pie draaien en ik dacht echt meerdere keren van... Uh, ik dacht meerdere keren van, moet een backup maken? Moet een backup maken? Tot op een gegeven moment dacht ik, ik had een backup moeten maken. Dus <laughs> nu heb ik een B-Link en die heeft geen SD-kaart meer. En dat is mooi ook een Zeker, maar goed, daar, daar kies je zelf voor. Ik ben nog in de eerste stadium bij jou. Ik moet een backup maken. Ik heb een backup maken. Ik heb nog een vraag. Bijna kunnen we dit, nee. Uh, dit, wa waarom tailscale output? Bij een agent zand? Uh, tailscale, ja, ik ging dat een keertje proberen. Ik had het in een podcast gehoord. En het was zo belachelijk makkelijk om te gebruiken. Um, ja, alles verbindt onder elkaar. En ik kwam ook bij, ik zit sinds kort bij uh, Delta. En die hebben dus Carry Great Net. Dus ik kan geen poort terug naar huis in krijgen. Ja, ik kan hem vragen. Maar toen dacht ik, ja, dat probeer ik tailscale. En dat werkte. En toen dacht ik, ja, wat zou ik nu nog moeilijk doen? Dan blijf ik Tailscale wel gebruiken. En eigenlijk groeit het van het daar. En dat is echt briljant goed. Huh? Hey? Carry Great Nets, ja. Ja, ja, ja. ja, je kan het aanvragen, maar ja, ik zag het en toen dacht ik, ga ik het aanvragen? Ik heb nu ook een kans om Tailscale te proberen. Dus... Nee, want je hebt je nat thuis. Uh, en dat is jouw modem, maar dan hebben ze eigenlijk op hun niveau nog een keer zoiets draaien, waardoor je, ja, je krijgt IP-adres en IP-adres en IP-adres. Dat is net wat te veel. Niet leuk. Volgens mij is het dan pauze. Oké. Okay. Uh, nog één applaus op Bart.